Okay, hi and welcome to another video discussion in data analytics. This is actually a continuation of module number 9, Hypothesis Testing on Two Sample Means. And we are now in part 2, Hypothesis Testing on Dependent or Correlated Samples. So samples are considered to be dependent when the subjects are paired or matched in some ways. For example, yung pretest score at saka yung posttest score. Um, next, yung weight before taking supplements and then yung weight after taking supplements. And finally, yung frequency of dining out before the pandemic and frequency of dining out after the pandemic. So in simple words, kapag ka parehas ang source ng data mo, then that is correlated. So, if you still remember, nung nag-independent samples tayo, ang groups natin ay male at female. They don't have anything to do with one another. Their scores are not affected by one another. And they come from different sources. Pagka-correlated samples or dependent samples, isa lang ang source niyan. So, halimbawa, one-to-one uh, -one siya. So, for example, pretest score ni student number one. Ang kapartner niya, yung post-test score ni student number one then. Wait before taking supplements ni respondent number one. Ang kapartner niya, wait after taking supplements ni respondent number one then. So, lagi siyang um, gathered from one source and paired siya or matched siya. Okay? Okay. And take note that the number of samples for groups one and two must be equal. Kasi nga, iisa lang yung source for the sample one and sample two. Okay? Okay. Now we have the assumptions. Meron ulit tayong tatlo. The samples are random. The samples are dependent or correlated. And when the sample size or sample sizes are less than 30, the population or populations must be normally or approximately normally distributed. This is our case problem number two. Um, the frequency of dining at a restaurant. An aspiring restaurateur wishes to open his own restaurant. The business plan he proposed to potential investors back in 2019 was approved and he was supposed to open up the restaurant in the second quarter of 2022. His restaurant concept is focused on indoor dining with no delivery services. However, due to the pandemic, he is worried that his original plan might need revisions due to the change in the dining patterns of his target demographic. Specifically, customers dine out less during the pandemic. Yun yun na notice niya. At 99% level of significance, determine the claim that customers dine out less due to the pandemic. And so, na edit out ko na siya. May less na dito. Okay, so this is the table. Of responses. So take note that this is from the same respondents lang. So kung sino yung tinanong mo for the frequency of dining out before the pandemic, yun din yung mga same na tao na tatanungin mo for the frequency of dining out during the pandemic. Uh, makikita mo yung relationship or matching or pair up ng mga values natin. So si respondent number one, Six times nagda dine out before the pandemic, but during the pandemic, approximately in a week, five times na lang. Um, frequency of dining out before the pandemic, um, eight weekly, pero during the pandemic, twice a week na lang siya nagda dine out, and so on and so forth. So per week, ito yung data natin. Now, this is our solution. We will follow the same steps in encoding the data using base or stats. However, instead of choosing independent samples, we will choose correlated samples. Okay, so I prepared here. Mm, ayan. So I prepared here the dining out table. Ayan, dining out before the pandemic and dining out during the pandemic. Ayusin ko lang yung ano, uh, mga values natin. Parang iba yun nandito. Just wait a moment.
Okay, yan. 6866101010. Parehas na ba? Ayan, parehas na. Okay, now punta tayo sa Visor Stats. So, Visor Stats.net. So, dito sa Visor Stats.net, T-test and procedures. Two sample t-test for independent or correlated samples. So, choose natin si correlated samples. Dapat may lalabas dito ang correlated samples sa baba. Okay? Okay. So, for the data entry, yung frequency of dining out before the pandemic, lagay natin siya dito. Copy natin siya. And then, paste lang natin siya under sample A. And then, for sample B, Take note, dito pwede magkabali-baligtad ha. So, dapat kung paano mo siya kinopy dito, ganun mo rin siya ipipay sa sample B. Dapat match siya. Yung 6, kapartner niya si 5, si 8, kapartner niya si 2, si 6, kapartner niya si 0, and so on so forth. How many respondents do we have here? We have 15 respondents pala. Okay, so approximately normally distributed siya. So, ang gagawin natin susunod, just calculate. Okay, so dito makikita natin na meron tayong 15 samples for A, 15 samples for B. Pero, sabi nga natin, um, hindi ka dito magre-refer sa total na 30. Instead, you are going to pair them up. So, you only have 15 respondents. Okay? Okay. And then for the mean, by visual inspection and quick arithmetic, Ayan, about four, four days in a week yung nabawas sa pagda-dine out nila. From 7.2, nag-lessen siya, nag-drop siya to 3.2. Ayan. So, this is the data summary, the important statistics that we have from our two samples. And then, dito sa results, mas simple siya kasi hindi mo na kailangan mag-test ng difference for variances. Hindi mo na kailangan i-test kung equal ba ang variances or hindi. Because if you are dealing with correlated samples, uh, we don't have t-test assuming unequal variances. So, wala pong ganun kapag ka correlated or dependent samples. Valid lang po yung um, f-test for significance of the difference between the variances of the two samples Kung independent ang samples mo. Pag dependent, instant na. Kung ano yun nandun sa table for results, yun na po talaga yung gagamitin natin. Okay? Okay. So, tingnan natin yung mga values natin dito. So, for T, we have 5.46. And then, for one-tailed p-value, it is less than 0 0.0001. So, napakaliit niya. Mas maliit pa siya sa 0.0001. Sa two-tailed naman, mas maliit pa siya sa 0.0001. Napakaganda kapag ka ganito yung lumabas na mga result or output sa inyo. Kasi, um, hindi nyo na kailangang mag-isip kung significant ba siya or hindi. Since, obviously, it is less than 0.0... Uh, it is less than 0.01. Okay, so kapag ka nakita nyo na ganito, less than 0 0.0001, automatically, reject H on na kaagad yan. Okay. Okay. So, yung mga steps na ginawa natin live sa resource stats, nakapaste din po siya dito sa module nyo. So, you can read this on your own later. Now, ayan. Dito tayo sa step 1. Medyo may liliwanagin tayo dito kasi may keyword tayo na ginamit na less than. di ba? Customers dine out less during the pandemic. But why is this pointing to the right? So, dito muna tayo sa HO. So, sa HO, null hypothesis, there is no significant difference in the frequency of dining out before and during the pandemic. Madali lang to eh. Hindi natin ito masyadong problema. Pero dito sa alternative, bakit naka-greater than siya? So, di ba ang... Sabi, customers dine out less during the pandemic. So, anong dapat ang mas malaki? Yung mean sub 1, yung before? Or yung mean sub 2, yung during? So, dapat mas malaki si before. Kasi, customers dine out less during the pandemic. So, kapag ka binaligtad mo yung less, it is actually greater than. Okay? 
So, ano lang siya, um, it's a matter of common sense. Uh, alam ko naman na may common sense kayo lahat. So, mag-gets niyo to. Uh, the frequency of dining out before the pandemic is greater than the frequency of dining out during the pandemic. Because, pag binaligtad mo yung, um, binaligtad mo yung greater than at binaligtad mo yung possession, no means of one and means of two, it will be less than. So, customers dine out less during the pandemic. Okay? Okay. And then, these are the values that we arrived with. Then, sa VSR stats, so statistical test natin, IP test, uh, please disregard this one. Yan. Tatanggalin ko to dun sa ibibigay ko module sa inyo. Uh, with equal variances. Actually, ngayon pa lang tatanggalin ko na siya para hindi ko siya makakalimutan later. Ayan. And then, the test value is 5.46. Uh, step 3, find the p-value. So, p-value, one tail right. It is less than 0 0.0001. So, make the decision. So, since the p-value is less than the alpha, that is 0 0.0001 is less than 0 0.01. So, di ba 99% yung level of significance natin dun sa case problem? Ayan, at 99% level of significance. So, 99%, 100 minus 99 is 1%, and 1% is 0 0.01. Ayan. So, step 5, summarize the results, and if possible, give your recommendations na rin. At 99% level of significance, there is sufficient evidence to conclude that target customers dine less during the pandemic. And it is suggested that the restaurateur make revisions in his business plan, such as considering adding delivery services, takeout services, and outdoor dining. Okay? Okay. So thank you very much for listening. And just wait for the upload of your engaging activity. Just check the Google Classroom to see the file or link for the engaging activity. That is the same for the performance task. Hindi ko pa kasi na i-paste. Thank you very much and I'll see you next time. Bye!